Today's episode of This Week in Web Design is brought to you by Full Sail University, offering immersive, fast-paced degree programs both on campus and online, designed for the needs of today's technology media industry. For more information, visit fullsail.edu slash thisweekin. Today is co-working is a co-working space right for you? Today I'm joined by Jerome Chang, the CEO of Blank Spaces. If you're working from home, all alone, stick around and watch today's show. Bienvenidos al episodio número 114 of The School Live, formerly known as This Week in Web Design. I am your host, Jose Caballer. I am the Chief Education Officer of The School. Joining me every week, we have Ari Gimon, who's a freelance creative director extraordinaire here in Los Angeles um, and a longtime collaborator on the show. Uh, like I said, we have Jerome Chang of Blank Spaces. He's the founder. Do you call yourself CEO or are you... You're not comfortable with CEO. No. So I just seriously fucked it up there at the beginning. <laughs> All right. He is the founder of Blank Spaces. Uh, so don't get confused. He's the founder. Um, so I do the same thing. Instead of calling myself CEO as in chief executive officer, I call myself chief education officer. Uh -huh. ah, I get it. So we're here to talk about co-working. Is co-working uh, the right thing for our audience? And we have a diverse audience. If you're watching this for the first time, you might be a designer, you might be a developer, you might be somebody in tech, or you might be somebody in creative. But you watch this show because we teach you how to execute, collaborate, and thrive in the 21st century in the digital economy. Uh, you've watched the show for a long time. You've been watching it since this week in web design. You know what we're all about. Today, I want to talk about this topic because it's an important topic to me as an entrepreneur and an important topic for our community here. So Jerome, let's start by introducing you. First of all, you're a pioneer in co-working here in Los Angeles. Tell us your story. Uh, my name is Jerome. I'm an architect. And all I wanted was my own, my own office space several years back. And in 2008, I opened Blank Spaces. It was the first co-working space in SoCal. Uh, since then, uh, we have about almost 20 co-working spaces in the greater LA area. Wow. So co-working really has... In general, Blank Spaces has two and three. One more is coming online. Right. Two are open, and the third one's coming online uh, in about a month or two. Excellent. So what, let's talk about what co-working is, first of all. What is co-working? Uh, you know, the general definition is that it's a community of entrepreneurs and freelancers where they all share an office space. And what I do is that I provide very flexible office arrangements and stuff that you can't get on your own. Expensive printers, high-speed network, nice chairs, co nice conference rooms. This is stuff that you want to have, but you can't have or justify to have it by yourself. By pulling together into a community, you can get it. So basically, instead of uh, having to get all the infrastructure that you need, when I opened my office in 2004, um, I had to get printers. I had to get. I shared it with a friend. We went in on the lease. Uh, it was 7,000 square feet, which was ridiculous. But you know, that's what we were doing. It was downtown LA, actually, uh, near Broadway. Um, but it was expensive. Yeah. It cost us 50 grand just to build out the space, and that was cheap comparative to what the space would have really cost if we would have paid, you know, the real amount. Right. Um, and you're an architect. You know that you can't do 7,000 square feet for 50 grand. You're seriously doing some magic there. All right. What do you think about? you know, co-working, you have a strong opinion about them. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, there are some really nice ones. I really like the uh, community aspect of it, like meeting a lot of great people. I've worked with some in, uh, or in some in Santa Monica, specifically Coloft, and I have been at Blank Spaces when you were doing the education program. Um, I have to say, I've been to a few downtown, but they're not great. Um, little guy. Why is that though? What is it that you're looking for? You're a freelance creative director. Yeah. You're working for some pretty serious, you know, people, some startups. Why wouldn't? Why, what is it that you didn't like about it? Uh, I think the one downtown it just didn't look great. You know, it, it's not a place where I would feel comfortable bringing clients. Um, and being downtown, as you know, there was always the issue of security. So being on the ground floor, there wasn't any guard that I could see anywhere or anybody like really ah, looking over things. I think everybody had a key, so you just kind of lost. So you're looking it. at it from a client, um, uh, from a, a being presentable to your yes. client, but also from a very basic kind of point of view, like security. Right. So how are you going to address those issues? Uh, well, first of all, let's just say this: uh, talk, describe to us blank spaces and your philosophy and your philosophy uh, as an architect, because that's something that's I think fascinating to me uh, when you designed, you know, the, the Santa Monica and the mid. Mid Wilshire uh, spaces. So I follow basically two basic philosophies. One is that as an architect, I'm trying to create a built environment, the space that surrounds you, to be, to get you to be very productive. And the second philosophy goes hand in hand. Is that I want a space. I, I design a space that you want to go to. You want to go to. You don't have to go to. You want to go. 
and between those two basically drives all the decisions I make in everything from where the offices are to where the desks are, the sizes, the colors, and all that. So one thing that impressed me, and I'm not only we not only know each other, you know, from for a while uh, because of blank spaces, but I've been a customer uh, in multiple ways. Um, I I was actually a little bit. Um, I thought it was a little too fancy the first time I went to the Santa Monica one. Um, you know how I'm averse of the West Side and kind of like the fanciness that it is. That's okay. It's maybe because I come from humble beginnings. Um, but um, the the interesting thing was that over time, and when I brought my clients, I did a, I, uh, for Edible Schoolyard, which was a project that we were doing um, with the Chepany Foundation uh, with Alice Waters in San Francisco, their team came down for two days to do uh, work sessions. We were doing scrum uh, planning work sessions, agile planning work sessions, and we used the Santa Monica space. Uh, I think it was 400 bucks for the day. For the two days, I don't remember. Whatever it was, yeah. something like that. Um, and uh, and it was so. You have what's the brand of furniture you have? Steelcase. Steelcase, which is a pretty hardcore and uh, amazing kind of uh, furniture company. It just worked well. So at a functional level, I thought, wow, okay, yeah, this is pro. Like it feels good, it's solid. So I took back my, it was too fancy kind of thing. And I liked working there. Like I actually wanted to come back and work there more frequently uh, when I was working there. The people I was meeting, I was meeting like a PR firm, which I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't need them right now, but I might need them. Uh, real estate folks, legal folks, people doing their startups. Obviously for me, for the school, is a perfect community. And we did the first series uh, of school workshop. Actually, we've done about four, uh, series of workshops every year for the last four years. Um, the ones at Blank Spaces were like a step up. We were getting really fancy, and it was a perfect venue for them. We did a really, it was a really great thing. Anyhow, but let's go back to some of the questions. Uh, what are some of the famous things that have happened, like the fancy stuff that has happened at, at, at Blank Spaces? So uh, Science Media is run by a number of people, including Mike Jones and Tom Dare and Mike Meganan. Former uh, clients of mine. And uh, four or five years ago, they were a part of a group called Savo Media. And while they were waiting for construction and for their office space to be built, they needed some temporary office space for about six weeks. And so they camped out at Blank Space at LA, our first location. And uh, as a result of it, they were able to be very productive immediately. They came in one day, boom, set up. Uh, what was really good was that they were also in the process of picking and buying office furniture. Mm. And they generally didn't know what they were getting involved in, uh, getting themselves involved in for picking commercial grade furniture. Well, as a result of the six weeks with us, they picked a lot of the same stuff that we had picked because it just made sense to them. They wanted like, hey, this works. We want it in our office. So our co-working space ended up to be like a lab showroom of sorts. For, for, for Silk right. Can you show pictures while he's talking? Absolutely. Can you bring up some of the pictures? Yeah. Keep on going. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, Science Media w had just been born, and they were waiting for their office space to be built out. So for three months, they camped out at Blank Space in Santa Monica. And in this case, they were a team of 15 people and took over a pretty large space within that office. That's amazing. So you're saying Science, which uh, is now the name of the company, uh, Mike Jones uh, and, and who we know, well, well Mike McEnan, who I know, who uh, we helped on, my, on the MySpace we designer for years ago, um, uh, they basically started there. Yeah. And, and there, there are other companies that have, so if you're a startup, you can kind of put your team in there before you actually get offices. Um, if you're an individual freelancer, you could work, you know, you can have a desk and work there and do your client meetings there. Um, uh, in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of a uh, scale or size, you're, 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 we're talking right now about the startup kind of community here in LA, which we have a very strong community. Uh, what are other startups that have come and been part of Blank Spaces and become uh, successful? Another notable one is a group called Real Gravity. And uh, these two founders uh, started just with some part-time desks. And across the six to eight months, they grew to about, I think, four or five people. Uh, and then they got to a point where they need to hit certain milestones where they need to kind of camp out in their own office space. So they moved down the street for a few months, and then they got acquired by Scripps Network. But they couldn't have gotten to that point without an ability to get very flexible office arrangements for their team that was growing. And they didn't know how many people they'd hire mm. across several months. So, oh, okay, we're going to hire in this one. So you have two people. You add a third person. That's a 50% increase. Mm. Add a fourth person. That's still a 33% increase. So how do you find office space that expands and contracts the way your team does. You can't. Drywall doesn't move like that. Hmm. And so you need an, a flexible offering arrangement with very flexible 
furniture configurations to accommodate all that. And that's where the architecture comes in. Interesting. The, the, your skill as an architect really is something that fascinates me because that makes a, a, a big impact. And it's curious because that might have a little bit to do with the story. Why blank spaces? Why the name? Um, it came from a discussion among some of us architects, um, my colleagues who are, who are architects. And it's the idea that LA is spread out, but there's a lot of intense nodes. There's downtown, there's Beverly Hills, there's Santa Monica. But in between, there are a lot of blank areas. Mm. So this is a way to fill in the blanks and intensify those connections between strong nodes. I like that. I like the name. I like I like the concept. I mean, Ari, bring back up those pictures real quick so that we can see uh, blank spaces in all their glory. And we're going to talk a little bit about, um, uh, you know, your vision, your long-term vision. This is the Mid Wilshire uh, um, uh, location. So you see what I mean by that? It's actually re it looks really nice. I actually like the wood, the combination of the red with the blue, like the warm with the cool. It's really nice. I like it when, when you put people in it. Um, you were showing us earlier this funny video that kind of talks about working alone. Uh, look at that conference room. That looks like I, we, I did an event there, actually. I did yeah. a coaching workshop there yeah. uh, with Noel, uh, who did um, one of the tech um, tech jobs LA events there. Right. But but it's a beautifully done space. You can tell that you have the, the touch you know, of, of an architect. It's, 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 it's beautiful. One thing that I want to talk about with you or ask you about it is, it, so what is your, what, what your long-term vision uh, for blank spaces and how does that play a role in what's happening now in the 21st century, the future of work, basically? Well, it's strange in this 21st century, uh, this business is really a bricks and mortar play. Mm -hmm. um, the only way it ever grows is by adding more locations. And I just hope I have the opportunity to be able to put another blank spaces in a neighborhood that's convenient for other people, uh, whether it's in Pomona, in San Francisco, or Orange County. Right now, we're in the more dense areas of greater, uh, greater LA. Greater Los Angeles. And I hope I can you know, just be able to tap into more communities and provide a hub for all other entrepreneurs to be able to do more, get more. Get more. And, and it's interesting talking about the 21st century. So let's talk about for our viewers, uh, whether you're in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in New York, in the Midwest, wherever you might be, there are co-working spaces in your areas. Um, if you are in, um, in, let's say, Dearborn, uh, not Dearborn, Michigan, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, I know for a fact that uh, our friends uh, over at Start Garden have a co-working space that they provide to their people. And also, I think they, don't correct me if I'm wrong, and anybody from Start Garden, you can leave the comments below uh, if, you, if you don't provide that. Uh, for uh, uh, for rent, but I think you do. Uh, but here in LA, you know, and, and I do know the uh, the ones I know just off the top of my head. Um, I know uh, Next Space, which I like, and I've talked to, and Sarah Boehner, who uh, works, I think, uh, who's one of their community uh, folks, uh, was on uh, at the Merch Conference. She was one of the panelists, um, and also they're in partnership with uh, Amplify LA in Venice. Uh, which is, uh, and they also have a Culver City venue, and I know the CEO also. Uh, they're other than next space and blank spaces, Koloft, Koloft yeah. which is nice space. I that was at an nice event there the other day. Um, so that's three right there, just in LA. So and there's stuff opening in downtown, uh, or not downtown. There's more more co-working spaces. You said there's about 20. So just Google co-working spaces in your neighborhood, whatever, wherever you are. Um, what would you say uh, from from if I'm, let's say, a, a web designer, and I'm, this show was called originally This Weekend Web Design, and I want to suddenly have an office, and I don't want to work all by, my, by myself at home, and I know that I'm going to grow and ebb and flow depending on my projects, how would you, what would you tell them the coworker, that co-working can offer them, or obviously specifically blank spaces can offer them? Well, it offers a very productive, uh, real office space for you, uh, as opposed to trying to pick up client calls or do work at a Starbucks or any cafe. Uh, you have access to an 11 by 17 color laser printer. I mean, this is kind of stuff for creatives is really important. 11 by 17 is always that upper threshold that usually is not cost effective. Um, another great benefit is, of course, the community. You might be sitting next to, I don't know, uh, a programmer who then could provide some of the back end programming for your website. Because mm -hmm. your, your specialty may be the UX side of it, and you need a programmer side of it. And you, then you can either hire that person, collaborate with them, partner with them on a project that, you know, that might be coming down the pipeline for you. The events as well. Events, I like events. Right, yeah. Yeah. and so we, have, we host, uh, host, sponsor, or otherwise provide events, um, probably at least once or twice a week somewhere within the space, whether it's a creative writing class, well, whether it's a LA.net event, a founders panel event, or one of your events uh, that come every few months. Yeah, the school has done a lot of events. Uh, Oh, thank you so much. Um, 
So here's something interesting, you know, one of the reasons why I really like you is because you're a creative also. So I'm a graphic designer who happens to be an entrepreneur and happens to be building, you know, uh, a media empire, I guess. Well, what do you want to call it? An education company. Um, and uh, you're an architect. You still practice as an architect. That's right. I still practice as a graphic designer uh, or as a, a, I guess now as a web designer strategist. Um, so I really like that because I can relate with you and we have, uh, you have a bigger vision than just, hey, this is, than yourself even uh, for what uh, the co-working space is uh, and a specific kind of craft to it and it, it reflects in the uh, in the execution. But talk to me a little bit about your architecture practice, how that has affected you know your experience with uh, creating co-working spaces, and and uh, you know talk to me about that about your architecture practice. So a few weeks ago, I was very lucky to be profiled in Inc.com with uh, two other co-working spaces. Um, they wanted to talk about with co-working space co-working operators who had uh, a kind of quote-unquote second business. And there, there I am with two other people, um, and my little two-person architecture firm gets profiled within Inc.com as a result of blank spaces. So it's like public, you know, PR times two. Great PR, yeah. It's mm -hmm. awesome. You know, I could have never gone on the yeah. radar anywhere else. Uh, another thing that's happened just recently is that there is a, a large innovation center, uh, innovation slash co-working slash incubator space, center yeah. uh, that is trying to open up in Europe. And I won't say exactly where it is yet because it's kind of under wraps. But they want you to help. They just asked me to fly out there to awesome. do this next round of interviews because they had already come and visited. And they had found me through Blank Spaces. So, so here's what, my message to that company, by the way. It's like, Jerome's awesome. And if you want experience in co-working and genuine uh, uh, understanding of the issue and of innovation, um, I definitely throw in my vote for, for him being the primary architect on it. All right, that's my, uh, my message to them. Anyway, sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so in that way, in, in this particular case, there's two... Uh, two Revenue streams. Well, two potential opportunities. One for the architecture to design the space, and one for potentially blank spaces being either the infrastructure or the brand up front to run the facility. Because when you think about how many people have actually run these kind of facilities day in and day out, there aren't really that many people. Uh, yes, there's a lot of executive suites and business center kind of people, but those don't necessarily have a lot of community built around it. And this space really needs a lot of you know, full community programming. And that's something that we've been doing for a few years, and I think we can execute on a bigger level. And we're talking about 100, 200,000 square feet. So I'm not talking about wow, this little that's space. Wow, a huge space. New construction, uh, ground yeah, up. Ground up. Hundred to two hundred thousand square campus. feet. Campus. I'm fascinated by the future of work and by you know there's a lot of authors that, that write about it. You know everyone from Daniel Pink uh, to um, uh, different authors that I've read about the future. Yeah, of Richard work. Florida. Richard Florida um, and creative work, especially or knowledge work, work that's happening with your noggin. It does require a certain way of structuring it. Um, let's. Let, all right. I'm curious from you. You worked at the group, you know, with me for, for a, a good amount of time. Um, you saw the ebb and flow, us grow from me and you and Aldo Puigon, like in the, in the middle of a 7,000 square foot space, yeah. to having freelancers, then to having 40 people. We cut the space in half, we sublet, you know, we did all these things. We financed it by doing events and mm -hmm. uh, filming, you know, CSI New York. You watch CSI New York uh, frequently enough, you probably saw our office at some point. Um, or actually, it was, they, they emptied it out uh, to do other uh, scenes in there. But one of the challenges I had as an entrepreneur and as a founder is that it was expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, you're incurring, you know, seven thousand square feet at the beginning, uh, even at a buck fifty. That's still ten grand that you have to fork right. out. Well, look, right. the the bottom line is that you're a tech or creative entrepreneur. Why are you dealing with real estate? Why are you dealing with leases and with Why real estate? Why are you dealing with right. that? That's well, a, it's a necessary evil? No, 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 no. And from what I remember, Let someone else also, take care of it. It was also very dynamic, you know, and it, it changed. We scaled. Yeah, we went right. up and right. down. So depending every, on for our every project. change, you have to plan it out, execute yeah. it, deal with mistakes. Yeah. Was this the right Wi Fi? Yeah. Do we have the right phone system? Well, yeah. the PBX box can't handle it. Let us take care of it. This is what we do day in and day that's out. That's interesting. Yeah. That, that's it's like outsourcing it, but you're outsourcing, you're outsourcing to, the space. to the person next to you. It's not outsourcing it to someone like in way China. far away. Yeah. Far away. It's someone who would rather do it better than right. you would ever want to do it. Do you think co-working spaces are going to continue to grow as a trend in the future? Absolutely. The demand yeah. outweighs the supply, the by, supply by a huge amount. Think about it this way. If you take a company like, let's say, IBM. I don't, I'm going to throw out a random number. They have 100,000 employees. Yeah. Let's say they have an initiative to handle 10% of their staff to go work, get out of the office and work somewhere else. Right. That's 10,000. We have 800, not even, 800 co-working spaces 
in the, the, US, in the US now. That means that each one would have to have, handle at least 125 people at a time to oh, even wow. handle. Wow. One t Fortune, fi fi Fortune 100 company. You do that for about 500, 400 Fortune 500 companies, and you have a massive amount of problem that hasn't even hit the boards yet. It's interesting. What, so if somebody wants to, uh, so let's talk about the downtown space and what it's going to do and what it's going to have. I lived in downtown for many years. Now I live in what I call suburban downtown, <laughs> which is in the outskirts of downtown, uh, and it sounds like the country, but uh, still in a loft environment and still close enough by train to downtown. Um, the, the, tell me a little bit about the vision for the space. You know, what floor is it going to be on? How big is it going to be? Yeah. Like, what do you want to do for it? And, and let's talk a little bit about the crowd. So downtown for me is uh, really version 3.0. I've learned a lot about what can and what can't be done and maybe what should be tried next. And what I noticed was that um, version 3 really needs a lot more hangout areas. Hang out on the hallways. You hang out in the front area. You hang out, um, well, we have a roof deck with a clubhouse. So you'll mm -hmm. be able to hang out outside, which I don't think there's any co-working spaces now that has an out outdoor space. Mm -hmm. uh, so all those things I'm trying to implement, uh, it's going to be on the fourth floor of a four-story building uh, in the historic core area of Broadway. Historic area of downtown, yeah. uh, and we'll have well, we'll be right next door to the metro station. So that means now people can use the metro and get to us, even if they don't actually live or want to drive to downtown. Wow! So you can come from Hollywood area, you can come from Pasadena, right. you can come from Culver City. Mm -hmm. uh, in about two years, uh, there's going to be uh, all the way to the west side access. So I lived in downtown for 11 years. You still live in downtown? I still live there. How have you seen downtown change? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, just the way it's kind of you know, a lot of new people are coming in. A lot of talent. There's a couple of agencies down there now that I've been in touch with, um, particularly Fabric. Yeah, that's um, across the street. Fabric that's exactly is exactly right. So there's a lot of like creative talent down there. I think it's interesting in that there hasn't been a hub for all those people to come together. I see people working at Coffee Bar. Yeah, I, I worked at Coffee Bar a lot. So at now Starbucks, I'm an entrepreneur. Then. There's a Starbucks so now across a the Starbucks street. that opened and now right. Coffee Bar is empty. Yeah. But I hear they're going to turn it into a bar. So yeah. um, I. I since I since I left the agency world and I've been focusing on my startup, I worked at Blank Spaces. I worked at um, uh, I worked at Starbucks. I work at Starbucks a lot, mm -hmm. um, and then here in Culver City at our studio where we film the show. Um, but I love co-working. I lo I love working somewhere that I'm not taking care of it or that I'm not actually right. dealing with it. Or where you can talk to real people. Where you can other, uh, yeah, I love yeah. talking to other people. I like at coffee too. shops. I strike up conversations with everybody around me about the school. They can end up coming totally. to events and sometimes you know, I'm in my apartment and I. Just go down to Starbucks just yeah. to be Right, but people. think about the one of the biggest problems with working at Starbucks. You decide to take a lunch break, a bathroom break. Do you feel comfortable leaving, leaving your, laptop your laptop there? Yeah, I, I pay the homeless people. Yeah. <laughs> to well, actually watch my computer. Funny. My life is on my computer. No, I'm that joking. It's never joking. more than five feet. That's away why from you me. need Dropbox really in case you lose point. it. The security no, I, I know. I'm joking. I'm being an asshole. But but I think that's funny because that issue of like it's not your space. Right. Well, you're well, in it's not an appropriate space. True. It doesn't need to be your space. It just needs to be the appropriate space. Right. It needs a to be safe feel safe. Right. All right. This because sometimes in co-working, you don't have that desk. That's a desk that someone else will be sitting tomorrow. So it's not your space, right. but it's an appropriate space. But you can walk away space, right? and know that, oh, it's fine there. Right. You can ask a workmate, hey, can you... Oh, no, uh, it's just... It's you don't even have to ask. You yeah, it's the just bathroom. the culture there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that way, people are actually looking out for each other. Yeah. So you have more eyes on your stuff than you realize. Yeah, that's true. So Ari, what would it take to convince you to work more frequently in a co-working space? I mean, I think I've been to blank spaces and I like it a lot. I mean, I think the fact that it's going to be in downtown is great. I'm really, I mean, I'm, I'm sold already on it just because I'm going to be able to meet all those people that are down there working. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of people in the creative space that I haven't met yet just because there isn't a central place for everybody to go to in that neighborhood, right? I agree with that. Yeah. I think that there isn't a central place and that's gonna be a really uh, fundamental uh, shift and uh, even though I don't live in downtown anymore, I would even consider working out of uh, Absolutely. blind spaces. Absolutely, I would do it. And this the ones that I've seen, I think there's a great like uh, opportunity for it because the existing ones are not up to par. Up to par to yeah. what you need. Well, you know, I, I, I wanna defend them a little bit. You know, everyone, co-working is much like cafes. There's a lot of mom and pop and new types of uh, cafes out there and they're going to, uh, lay it out the way, kind of an extension of their personality. And that's just the way it is. And some of them have bootstrapped. So, mm -hmm. look, I, I like all the... It's expensive. Uh, it's a lot of... It's expensive to start yeah. up. And, yeah. you know, it's lucky that they're even, they're even open. So yeah. I'm glad they're there. They paved the road for all of us who want to be in downtown. 
and I, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful. They, they, they do a great job. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about crowdfunding. So you have a crowdfunding campaign uh, that we're going to have on our blog on the schoolrocks.com, the schoolrocks.com, uh, over the next few days, and I'll tweet it out and let everyone know. Uh, so if you're watching this episode, uh, go down to our comments, and you can actually look at the crowdfunding campaign uh, for Blank Spaces. And you're looking to raise about 50 grand. That's right. Uh, for the build out uh, for the next several months. And I think that's something that uh, our community should uh, not only uh, uh, embrace and be really involved with you know this is something that is contributing to I think what is very uh, uh, a very innovative and alternative mode of uh, financing community-based uh, um, businesses for an example the school is you know I've bootstrapped the school and it's the members that pay for uh, the school uh, the, the infrastructure um, and you know people like Jason Calacanis who support what I'm doing and, and we trade and barter for for everything we need and I feel that helping something uh, like uh, blank spaces uh, grow in downtown is a, is, a, is a great cause. So I really encourage all our school members to do that. The same way that Full Sail University sponsors and supports us, we just finished, I think, our second episode um, uh, last week, The Basics of HTML, which was awesome. Um, if you haven't watched it, The Basics of HTML in the last episode. Um, but blank spaces, you know, if you go to, uh, if you look at Blank Spaces and the relationship that I've had with Blank Spaces is not dissimilar to Full Sail. Full Sail, you know, gives us money in order for us to co-create content. And you can go to fullsail.edu this weekend, which, by the way, we're going to be changing those graphics uh, for next week so that they start matching the new title, which is The School Live. Um, uh, and it's already available. So you can go to uh, fullsail.edu slash this weekend and find out more about what Full Sail has to offer for your career in uh, web design, in uh, a lot of different professions, you know, even to audio engineering, which is the people that do the stuff that we do here at the studio. Um, it just it's an amazing um, place uh, that I've had a chance to visit and be in Florida. Uh, but that co that co creation, um, and I really actually look forward to uh, continuing. I mean, I know that we did events last year. We haven't done events recently uh, at uh, at Blank Spaces. But I, I felt that your generosity and the partnership in building uh, a community uh, is self uh, it's uh, mutually beneficial because the people that come to well, the look, events. I operate on a very simple philosophy. It's pay it forward. Yeah, you pay it forward. Whether it returns back as a benefit to me in the short run or the long run, as long as I see it working well, uh, mm -hmm. I'll keep doing it. You're awesome. You're, you're amazing. And I'm really uh, grateful for what you're doing in the LA community. All right. Do you have any questions for Jerome? Or no. Any? I mean, I'm really excited about it. I'm definitely looking forward to supporting it. And you should do an event there. To yeah. Kick it off. Do some more events. Actually, maybe kick off with a big school uh, yeah. workshop. That would maybe be great. we do it free for uh, people who come to Blank Spaces uh, to check it out and are considering coming to Blank Spaces. We can do a, a free event for you guys and uh, for the community here in LA. Um, one last thing I want to talk about uh, in terms of community in LA. And Ari, do you have it up at uh, myschooltools.com? Yes. Um, so one of the things that we're doing right now is we're going to discontinue uh, the uh, agency in a box kit that you guys know. Uh, and we're currently, uh, for until the end of the, uh, this week, actually for the next uh, few days, doing agency in a box for $1.99. Actually, click on it. Uh, if you go to myschooltools.com, myschooltools.com, uh, you can see there. We, we originally, we've sold it at multiple prices, including uh, the full price, but also during workshops at $800. Um, uh, at some of our events, uh, $500. Uh, but we're doing it now for $199 since it's going to get discontinued uh, for a very, very, very limited time. So if you're watching this episode, there's a link right below. Um, we put it on sale on Sunday, and already uh, we've had a huge... Uh, actually, I see the orders coming in, and, and, I, and I ha I, right there, there's two orders, actually, from the time that we were getting ready for the show. I get a notification from Shopify. Um, but it's a really amazing opportunity to pretty much... What I'm giving away, what's interesting, is I'm, I put everything that I use to run my agency in there, from the proposal process to the capabilities to the business plan to the uh, process of school OS and every single step. To we did a whole uh, 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 at the time it was in PowerPoint and then I made it into a page size PDF of the entire process end to end that a creative agency does for web. Uh, so all of those things are in there. Um, so it's hundreds of thousands of uh, of time of, of of dollars, actual dollars spent uh, over you know 
10 years of building a practice that you guys are getting for 199 and we've had everybody from you know AIGA members in San Francisco to um, other people uh, that are designers to people that are agencies uh, somebody who's a, the, the user experience lead at an agency in New York and it's a, a longtime friend somebody who's work with Racerfish um, big shout out to Jason in New York um, who bought it on Sunday when it actually got put on sale for 199 so we've been selling it for fourteen hundred dollars we have it on sale for 199 until the next version comes out, which is coming out really soon, and the next version is going to kind of go back to regular price. So this is an opportunity for you guys. Oh, and the next version is actually going to be a lot smaller because we've actually gotten a lot of feedback from you on, on what uh, this one has and how to both organize it and, and maybe potentially reduce some of the content. But if you want to get almost everything that I, I had on my computer for what for what it is to run an agency, I would highly encourage you to do that. And you know, again, it supports the community. So this is not an infomercial. This is simply that's what's supporting the school and supporting it grow. So what is it that you want to accomplish with the crowdfunding to go back to? And you're, are you are you going to what are you going to use? Where where are we going to send people to? Uh, crowd crowdfunder.com. Crowdfunder.com. We started by LA uh, LA entrepreneurs. So I oh, wanted awesome. to keep it local. So you're push uh, pu uh, uh, as you said, you're you're uh, paying it forward and you're using a local entrepreneur that's doing crowdfunding. Um, and that's actually uh, I'm really you know, I'm happy to help with that. Yeah. If we have to tweet it out every week and we have to tell people every week here on on the show yeah. uh, till May till the project gets done. We'll yeah. do that for you. Great. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much Jerome for being here today. Thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in crowdfunding uh, well, yeah, go to Crowdfunder. Uh, what is the URL? Crowdfunder.com. Crowdfunder.com. But if you're interested in co-working, uh, go to blankspaces.com. Dot com. Blankspaces.com. All right, can we show what yep. it might look like? Blankspaces.com. Um, and check it out if you're here in L.A. If you're not in L.A. Uh, and you're in another city, uh, Google uh, co-working in my city, and you'll actually get there. There it is, Blank Spaces, very beautiful space. Uh, and work for yourself, not by yourself, which is something that I hear very frequently. And join us again here next week when we continue the conversation. Uh, give, give us your questions. Leave your comments below in the YouTubes. Uh, also, follow Ari uh, on, on Twitter, Aurepa. Follow The School on Twitter, which is at The School Rocks. Follow me on Twitter. What's the Twitter for Blank Spaces? Blank Spaces. Blank Spaces, at Blank Spaces, which is the Twitter for Blank Spaces. Um, and let us know what content do you want, what can we continue doing here on The School Live, Wait, right here on the side, the school live. Um, and again, always, you know, if you're curious about joining the school pro, which is this school OS being done every week uh, in private, it's not publicly broadcast, but you can join the broadcast uh, via GoToMeeting for those of you who are members. And right now we're up almost up to 100 members at the School Pro. Very so cool. I really like the community and we're continuing to uh, improve and uh, produce more and more content for you guys. So we'll watch you guys next week here where you uh, watch us work uh, on the School Live. See you guys next week. Yeah.